Uh, our special guest, a friend of mine, and somebody who's not, uh, he's been here quite, quite often actually. This is the second uh, town hall meeting in the city of Cheryl. And uh, like our period, I go back a long time and he's always been willing to listen. And that's the most important part of an elected official. So, Mike, I don't think there's any further ado. If you'd like, start with Mike and uh, he'll speak for a few minutes and then we'll open it up to questions, concerns, and ideas. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike, thank you very much uh, for, for doing this. I think it's you know, so critically important at any time to, to um, for us to listen as elected officials, but I think more now uh, in today's economy and with all that's going on, both on a local, state, and federal level, uh, for us to be uh, engaged uh, locally and, and to be listening. So I'm really here, uh, like Mike today, to listen. Um, he uh, asked me to say just a few words to start with, and uh, you know, Pretty hard, no matter where you go today. The two questions that I get all the time are, you know, how is the economy doing, and you know, are we on our way out? How long will it be until we start to see a, a turnaround? Uh, you know, obviously, that's those are the million-dollar questions. If you have the answer to that, you need to be working, uh, you know, for the uh, uh, Federal Reserve, I think. But realistically speaking, I think that we are a bit fortunate here. Uh, although it doesn't seem it, you know, we are starting to now feel a little bit the, the unemployment that, that they're feeling in the other parts of the country, and that is an increasing, we're, we're getting in the 8% range in Oneida County, and that varies obviously from community to community. But the one thing we are not seeing in our community is the foreclosure. Uh, and I'd like to say that that's the result of some great uh, action on the part of any of your elected officials, but frankly it's not. The reason that I think that we are not seeing the foreclosures here in, in New York, especially here in upstate New York, is because the people here in upstate New York don't live beyond their means. We didn't try to take part in the, uh, you know, the, the uh, subprime mortgages. We lived according to our means. And, and based upon that, you know, I, I sort of use that as my barometer in terms of evaluating what kind of bills I support. You know, last week we had a bill that came through regarding the um, uh, housing bill. Uh, it was the president's uh, housing bill, and if, what it did is it would require bankruptcy, or allow, I should say, not require, allow bankruptcy judges to change the terms of a mortgage if a person were in foreclosure. Now, I voted against that. I talked to the local bankers. I talked to local credit unions. And I, and I was kidding all of them. Usually, credit unions are here on issues. Banks are here on issues. They usually don't agree. They both agreed on this issue. And I said to both of them, if you guys are agreeing on this issue, you've got to be right on the issue. So I did, you know, we made the, they made the bill a little better, but I still didn't support it. And, and my reasoning was this. Not because I didn't have sympathy for people who have homes in foreclosure, because I certainly do. Not because I didn't feel bad that you know, some people were losing their homes, but for a different reason. Is I was afraid that what would happen as a result of that bill is what we call in Washington the most frightening thing of all, the law of unintended consequences. That is, we try to do one thing, but something else happens that we didn't intend. And I was afraid as a result of doing that, what we would really do is force banks to tighten credit, which is exactly the opposite thing of what we want banks to do right now. We want banks to give more credit out not tighten credit. That's why I think that's part of what the problem is that we're experiencing now in our business community. Banks are not lending money. So I didn't support the bill for that reason and for one other reason. And, and again, um, it, it's not a selfish thing. It, it, it's not a, you know, a, a focus solely on my constituents. But you know, over the past 20 years, we have had it pretty tough here. You know, we have lost jobs. We've seen you know, businesses close. Where's our bailout been in the past 20 years? We tightened our belt. We lived through it. And we didn't live beyond our means. You know, these people have lived beyond their means in other places. And, and they've tried to make these, the, these, these deals with subprime mortgages that they couldn't afford. And now they want bailout. Well, all we're doing is encouraging you know, behavior that is not the right behavior. Bad behavior, number one. And number two is, we're, we're, I think we're allowing banks to tighten credit. So I didn't support the bill for that reason. But the point that I raised that for is, look, you know, there's no Democratic solution. There's no Republican solution. There's no right or wrong. There are just simply solutions. And the way that you find solutions is by working together in a bipartisan way to find the things that are best. And, you know, uh, we've, you know I, we try to do that whenever we can. It doesn't always happen. You know, personalities become involved in things. But from my perspective, that is what, what I try to do. And 
you know, we'll talk a little bit about, um, I'm sure, a number of things, and I don't want to talk for too long, but the last thing that I want to talk about is this. Um, just briefly touch on this, and that's the, um, uh, the, the economic recovery bill, or the stimulus bill, as it's been called. I supported that, and I think that, you know, that will, that will generate jobs, real jobs, in, in the localities, and I'll give you some specifics of that. But not only will it generate jobs, but it will do some other things. And the other things that it will do is it will do, it will create programs that we couldn't afford to do. Now, here's my thing. Over the past 10 years, actually over the past six years, we have spent billions and billions of dollars, in fact, much more than we're spending on the stimulus plan, in places like Basra to build roads in places like Baghdad to fix water systems, in places like Kabul to build schools. We have spent billions in other places. We did it right after World War II in the Marshall Plan in Europe. We can spend billions of dollars here in our own country to build schools, to fix water systems. To, I mean, Lord knows we need it here in Oneida County. We need it throughout upstate New York with our old infrastructure for water. We need it to fix our roads. We needed to build schools and we needed to put Americans to work. So I supported it. And just to give you an idea of how that already starts to affect us, is one of the things that the bill will do is it gives money for municipalities to buy buses, mm -hmm. hybrid buses, which are built, guess where? At Orion Bus Industries in Oriskany, which benefits our community. So there are real benefits that we are going to see. There was a, a $2 million that went to the city of Utica to remediate, to take out lead paint. They've been trying to get a lead paint removal grant for years. The stimulus plan put some of that money in there. And at the same time, it creates jobs in these areas. So I think you know part of the problem that we're seeing is the fear and the apprehension that people have. We saw it this week. What happened? We saw one of the banks just indicated that they are, uh, they are going to realize a profit. And all of a sudden, the stock market this week took off, and we had, I think, a, a 6 or a 9% gain in the stock market this week. Look, there are some systemic problems with the economy, not just here in this country, but around the world. But a lot of what we are facing is based upon people's fears and, and their concern and banks' failures to lend money. Um, a lot of things you're going to see happening. There's a thing called mark to market. Listen real good on that. I think you're going to see some real change on that. If we get some mark to market reform, um, we will see banks start to loosen credit up. That's critically important. Uh, it's, it's what happens when they base the assets that banks have on a market style of accounting rather than a cost accounting. But I think you'll see that uh, there'll be some changes in that over the next uh, few weeks. So uh, I'm here to answer whatever specific questions you have, but I want to thank you all. But more importantly, as uh, Mike said, we're here to listen. And uh, we should also say hello to our, our county clerks, uh, Sandy Roberto, who snuck in while we were uh, uh, while I was talking, so thank you all very much.